Here on this episode of Lost, Abandoned and Forgotten, we look back at an historic, world famous and instantly recognizable sports stadium landmark that's been an American icon for decades. This sports and entertainment mecca has served as a prototype for stadium design and architecture ever since it hosted its first Major League Baseball game in 1965 and its last one in 1999. The Houston Astrodome was a first of its kind in many regards and now sits condemned and abandoned. Let's look back at how it all began, what happened along the way, and what the future holds for the mighty Houston Astrodome. In the mid-1950s, Houston area Mayor Judge Roy Hofheinz wanted to attract a major league sports team to the Houston area and proposed a dome stadium concept. His efforts of promoting his dome stadium idea led to Houston being awarded a Major League Baseball team franchise. Voters approved an $18 million bond to fund the stadium project, and construction began January 3, 1962. The stadium was designed to be a multi-purpose, multi-use facility that could host numerous events, from baseball to football to boxing matches, and was part of a larger development complex called Astro Domain that included the Astro World Amusement Park. The stadium became known as the eighth wonder of the world as it was the first of its kind dome structure and became the standard for stadium design and construction for decades after it opened in 1965. The stadium wasn't originally called the Astor Dome when it opened. Back then, it was known as the Harris County Dome Stadium. The name was changed to match the name of the Houston Astros baseball team. The Houston Astros played the first game ever at the Astrodome on April 12, 1965. It was one of the first stadiums to have luxury suites, with 53 included in its design. Each of the 42,217 seats in the Astrodome were cushioned. Behind the end zone was a $2 million, 474 foot long scoreboard and display picture board called Astrolite. The dome roof is situated 18 stories above the playing field, which itself is located 25 feet below ground level. The stadium included a lot of brand new innovations and first of its kind features. Besides the dome roof and closed stadium design, the entire stadium was air conditioned. To overcome the dying off of the natural turf field that was originally installed due to lack of sunlight, a new synthetic field surface material that emulated a grass appearance was custom designed and installed after the 1965 season. This became known as AstroTurf. Back in the 1960s, the people who attended events and the sports teams who played there were awestruck by the futuristic look and presence of the stadium. In fact, many stars and VIPs of the day rushed to the Astrodome to take in its innovating and space-age design aesthetic. In the mid-1960s, the Astrodome truly was the future of stadium design and the professional sports business. The stadium served as a standard for other stadiums that were built in the 1970s and the 1980s, including the Superdome in New Orleans, the King Dome in Seattle, the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis, the Metrodome in Minneapolis, and the Silverdome in the Detroit metro area. Most of these stadiums have since been demolished. Here are some things you may not have known about the Astrodome. Roy Hofheinz, the stadium's developer, had a luxurious apartment suite constructed within the stadium that he used until he passed away in 1982. The apartment also featured a putting green, a shooting gallery, a puppet theater, and a bowling alley, and also a private terrace that overlooked the playing field. Also within the stadium was a hidden bar named the Tipsy Tavern, where an electromagnetic device was installed at the end of the bar to prevent beers from sliding off. In the early days, the dome also featured baseball game groundskeepers costumed as astronauts during Astros home games in keeping with the futuristic theme. And because they were awesome, they would vacuum the carpet clean between innings and rake the infield dirt. In June of 1976, a game between the Astros and the Pirates was rained out despite the dome being designed to prevent just such an occurrence. As the Astrodome's floor was 25 feet below ground level, nearby streets and entrances to the park became flooded after a summer storm. The 1970 movie, Brewster McLeod, was set at the Astrodome, where the main character resides at the stadium. The Astrodome was also the setting for the filming of the famous exhibition game between the fictional Houston Toros and the Bad News Bears in the 1977 movie, Breaking Training. 
The venue was also a filming location for many other movies and TV shows over the years. In 1999, it was reported that giant rats were residing at the Astrodome and that the stadium had released feral cats in an attempt to combat the problem. There were no further news reports on what the outcome was, but perhaps there is still an epic cat and rat war going on to this day. The Astrodome was built primarily for sporting events and was the home stadium for the Houston Astros Major League Baseball team, the Houston Oilers NFL team, and the Houston Rockets NBA team. The stadium also held the famous Battle of the Sexes tennis match in 1972 between Billie Jean King and Bobby Riggs, with King winning in three straight sets. The venue also hosted boxing events, WWF events, and motorsports events from its opening in 1965 to 2002. In January 1972, Evil Knievel jumped 13 cars two nights in a row, drawing over 100,000 spectators to the Astrodome. In fact, there was even some discussion of him making an actual jump over the stadium itself sometime in the future, but it never happened. Besides sporting events, the Astrodome also hosted many musical artists, bands, and concert events. The first artist to play the Astrodome was Judy Garland on December 17, 1965, where she was paid $43,000 to perform one show. The Supremes were her opening act, and tickets were priced from $1 to $7.50. Elvis Presley gave six performances there between February and March 1970, and at the time set an attendance record with 200,000 people over the span of the six shows. He performed there again on March 3, 1974, setting a single-day attendance record. Pink Floyd played a concert there on November 18, 1987 as part of their A Momentary Lapse of Reason tour. On September 4, 1992, Metallica, Guns N' Roses and Faith No More played at the stadium. The last concert held at the Astrodome was George Strait and the Ace in the Hole Band during the 2002 Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo before a record crowd of 68,266 people. The last major event held at the Astrodome was the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo in 2002. After that, the stadium had no major tenants or events that utilized the facilities. This was mainly because the stadium had become dated and because a new retractable roof stadium had opened next door, the Reliance Stadium, now known as the NRG Stadium. However, the stadium did serve a noble purpose in 2005 when Hurricane Katrina struck the New Orleans area and approximately 25,000 evacuees were allowed to temporarily shelter at the Astrodome until they could find permanent accommodations. The evacuation began on September 1, 2005, with all scheduled events canceled at the Astrodome for the final four months of 2005 to accommodate the evacuees. Overflow hurricane victims were held in the surrounding Reliant Park complex. There was a full field hospital inside the Reliant Arena, which cared for the entire Katrina evacuee community. In 2008, the Astrodome was cited for numerous building code and bylaw violations and was permanently shuttered. Since its closure in 2008, there have been several plans and proposals to renovate, refurbish, or repurpose the Astrodome. The City of Houston proposed a plan to host the 2012 Summer Olympics that included refurbishing the stadium. Houston became one of the United States Olympic Committee's bid finalists, but instead, the USOC chose New York City as its candidate city, with the Games ultimately awarded to London by the IOC. Other plans along the way including repurposing the stadium as a luxury hotel, a movie studio, a covered park space, and as an updated event and convention facility with all of these being rejected due to occupancy code violations or Harris County voter rejection of bond financing ballot proposals. In fact, Harris County refused to demolish the building unless a formal demolition plan was put forward, which no one had done as of the end of 2013. This is one of the reasons the building has never been demolished up until this point. Then, in January of 2017, the Texas Historical Commission voted unanimously to designate the dome a state antiquities landmark. Under the designation, the Astrodome was not permitted to be removed, altered, damaged, salvaged, or excavated without authority from the Commission. Finally, in late 2016, a plan was approved and funded that sought to revitalize the Astrodome by raising its floor and using the new space created beneath as parking areas, leaving the floor above for other event and conference uses. Construction is to start in early 2019 and is expected to be completed in 2020. 
After a decade of existing in limbo, the Astrodome is to be brought back from the brink and gain a new lease on life with the Astrodome Revitalization Project, which will transition the building to a revenue generating facility with potential for future refurbishment and uses. From a cultural and business perspective, the Astrodome certainly left its mark. It ushered in lots of firsts and innovations with regards to stadium design, pro sports business models, and how fans experience sporting events as both attendees and television viewers. It also changed advertising and how the media covers sports. In a way, the advent of the Dome Sports Stadium was instrumental in the genesis of the big money professional sports landscape we have today. As stadiums got bigger, so too did fan interest, attendance, player salaries, and advertising sponsorships and budgets. The Astrodome served as a blueprint for how major cities could attract or retain their major league sports teams. In fact, if the city didn't have a shiny new sports stadium, there were other cities that would lure away their sports teams with promises to build them one. The Astrodome came at the right time in the 20th century, where it seemed everything was right for this type of stadium. Demographically, the post-World War II baby boom had produced an explosion in population that was coming of age, and along with them came vast amounts of disposable income. Technology, too, was at the point where many new material innovations, construction techniques, and mass broadcast means were available to create and sustain massive stadiums and sports businesses that would rely on them to reach and entertain vast numbers of people. Even the Astronome name was chosen to capitalize on the space race zeitgeist of the 1960s era. It was an exciting time in America where innocence still prevailed and all things seemed possible and exciting, and in many ways it was being proven by the successes of the space program, higher living standards, and the building of the eighth wonder of the world, the Houston Astrodome. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching. I'm your host, Jay Burton. If you like the video, you'll love our channel. Please subscribe below. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram.